Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of the Dada's Show coming to you from Best Western Hotel in Upper Hill here in Nairobi. I'm your host, Ashiko Mbune. Now, this is an especially special episode for us because, as you all know, the Dada's Show, the main aim is to create a platform for women of Kenya to have a safe space where they can be able to share issues affecting them, be it in their career, in their families, in their lives, in their health no matter what this is a safe space for women to do that however today we are turning the spotlight to the men in our lives so the day is sunday june 18th 2023 it is father's day did you know that <laughs> so this is a day that is globally recognized and acknowledged it's time when we uh, celebrate the men and the fathers in our lives and the impact that they have in our lives of course and in society as large uh, however it has been uh, there has been a notion that Mother's Day is uh, is perceived as of more importance than Father's Day. So here today, we are refuting that claim. So on this episode of Dada's Show, I am joined by some outstanding gentlemen uh, who go by many titles, but one of them is Dad. So as always, we encourage you at home to take part in this and any other conversation on all our social media platforms at KBC Channel One. You can also hit me up on my page at Ashiko, the host at all social media platforms. So we want to hear your thoughts, share your thoughts, celebrate your father, your uncle, your grandfather and any man who is special in your life today send us a message you know drop a message on our social media boxes and on my personal page and we will be able to acknowledge them now before we jump into this uh, celebration that we have today uh, let's take a look at the following feature <laughs> Father's Day is celebrated and honors the men who have embraced the essential role of fatherhood, paternal bonds, and the influence of fathers in society. On this day, we also thank fathers and father figures, such as uncles, grandfathers, for the sacrifices they make for embracing the responsibility of nurturing and raising children and for their devotion to their families. My name is Tiswangare from Umoja, Nairobi. Um, I'd like to wish my father a happy Father's Day. Moses Ayugi Juma, he's all the way, he'll be working probably, but for me I'd like to say, Dad, you're my superhero. My name is Elvis Steven uh, from Kibra. Uh, I want to send my regards to my mom, always being uh, supportive to us, always uh, taking good care of us ever since we were young, always supporting us emotionally, financially. And you know, taking us also to school, which we truly, truly appreciate. Uh, another thing I also want to say is that since uh, she's been a leader and like an anchor to us, she has definitely given us that fatherly uh, portion uh, in our family. And we truly, truly appreciate her more love and more respect and more regards to her. Father's Day is marked on every third Sunday of June across the globe and was founded in the states of Washington, United States. According to the Bible, fatherhood is a role that affects personal identity, spiritual inheritance, and moral training of children. The Bible also says that fatherhood should be characterized by integrity, honor, nurture, and compassion. My name is Yvonne Oyua, and I'd love to wish all my uncles, Uncle Malunda, Uncle Mike, Uncle Richie, a happy Father's Day for being uncles and father in my life. Yeah, I love you all. Family traditions established by fathers help bond families together as they are passed down from one generation to next. A father doesn't tell you that he loves you, he shows you. And from the daddy's team, happy Father's Day to all men. We see you, appreciate you, and we love you. So welcome back. Sir. As I mentioned, I am joined by some outstanding gentlemen. Huh? And this gentleman go by many, 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 many titles. But one of them and which is on focus today is dad. So right next to me, I have Mr. Waidaka Gatumia. Uh, thank you so much for making time off your very, very busy schedule. <laughs> you know, getting you was a hassle, but I'm so glad that you actually made it to sit here. So thank you so much, Mr. Waidaka, and Karibu Sana to Dada's 
show. Uh, next, I have Mr. John Wagasha. You know, <laughs> he's a tourist. <laughs> so even being able to nab him, you know how our gentlemen are, the men in our lives, they're always up somewhere looking for ways to make our lives better. So obviously I'm very, very grateful that Mr. Wagasha, you could be able to take time and be here. And finally, at the end, I have Reverend Edward Karanja, yes. who not only is a father to his biological children, but he's a father to his flock. He's a father to many. He's a mentor. He's a spiritual leader. And of course, we would not have Father's Day without celebrating the role that spirituality plays in all our lives. So we are looking forward to hear what, uh, we know, the role of a father, how spirituality plays in your life as a dad. Mm -hmm. Of course, I cannot fail to acknowledge my wonderful, wonderful audience who week in, week out, take time to come and sit here with me. Uh, I feel like sometimes I should be sharing my salary with you guys. <laughs> Sit down with me for hours on end as we discuss very pertinent issues of the day. So, Asante Sana for joining me. So now, to get the ball rolling, I'll start with you, Mr. John, uh, Mr. Waidaka, actually. Um, we asked the same question. We had, uh, we had a similar sitting for Mother's Day, and it's always important for us to hear from our panel. Um, what, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself first, and then tell us what fatherhood means to you. Okay, so thank you so much for the invite. Yes. I'm not that big. I can be found. I can be found, <laughs> obviously, as you can see. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. And um, this is something that's different from me because most of the time when I come to speak in a scenario like this, I'm talking about money. Yes. Um, I, I work as, uh, and I serve at Centonomy as CEO, yes. uh, where we train people on personal finance and entrepreneurship. Um, but outside of that, I do have a wonderful family. Um, my most amazing wife, Sheila, yeah, yeah. and my three daughters. So I'm a father of daughters You're a only. You're girl dad. <laughs> I, in fact, I joke all the time that in my house, I'm the, I'm the only gentleman. Yeah, I have my wife, my three daughters, the house help, even the dog is female. So I'm the only, I'm the only male in my house. So when I come to speak, um, I come from that perspective. Yes. Um, that's just over eight years of experience as a dad. Mm. I do, I'm sure the, the other gentlemen here have a lot more than I do. Yeah. Um, but even in that short period of time, I think yeah. I can offer something here yeah. uh, in this session. Mm? Absolutely. Mm. And today we're celebrating you. And we'll come back to you especially because I did, I did know you're a girl dad. I am, yes. and, and would be very curious to, to, to hear yes. because we have so many of our young sisters. You know, what the kind of, what's the relationship? What are, what are their ages? Oh, so mm. I have... Uh, 13, 8, and 6. Um, hopefully, by the grace of God, that I would, be, I would be part of the support system that they need yeah. to become an individual. Okay. Because we want them to be self-sufficient, want them to be um, able to, you know, live in this world mm -hmm. and, and succeed. And it starts from that perspective. So that's my aim. That's well put. Thank you so, so much. So we will turn over to John. So John, um, happy Father's Day. Thank happy Father's you. Day to you. So tell us also a little bit about yourself and of course um, uh, what, what fatherhood means to you and in your opinion, because as we started off, we talked about how Father's Day is always downplayed. So in your opinion, why do you think society does that? You know, but of course, start off by telling us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so my name is Wagasha, like uh, you have said. Okay. I want to start by thanking you for Thanks. recognizing us as fathers and bringing us on uh, this stage, yeah. which, you know, usually is about women. Yeah. So I think we are honored <laughs> that on this day you saw it fit to include us. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, on the only day probably that <laughs> men are recognized. <laughs> we'll bring you guys back. We'll, 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 we'll invite them eventually. No, no I mean even yeah. as fathers yes. uh, worldwide, this is probably the only day that the, the focus is on us. Mm -hmm. You know, usually it's about other people. Mm -hmm. So, you know, today is really a day of a celebration for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, well, you say I'm a tourist. I think that would be too fancy to call me a tourist. <laughs> uh, I work in the construction industry. And, you know, for that reason, my project takes me, you know, 
all over the place, out yeah. of town. I'm away from home a lot of times. Mm -hmm. uh, so I travel a lot, but not for tourism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah but uh, yeah, you could call it that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that is pretty much about me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you feel like, like uh, society likes to downplay the role of uh, Father's Day? Let's not say even the role of a man, because now that one is opening another whole can of worms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Father's Day. I mean, why do you feel, we always go back and forth about this conversation over and over and we keep on thinking, you know, Mother's Day would not be possible if the father, father was not there. So why do you think society likes to downplay that? I, I, I think the thing about being a man, yeah. uh, I might be wrong, but you know, this is my personal view. In your opinion, It's yeah. a lot about, uh, there's a lot about giving. Yes. You know, men are always giving. Yeah. You know, from day one, you're giving to your parents, you're giving to your kids, you're giving to your wife, you're giving to your the society mm -hmm. and men men are all about giving than receiving and for that reason because as we are growing up say as kids mm -hmm. we always say taking from blood and taking from blood and taking from blood mm -hmm. from mom of course we were taking but we also giving you know because yeah. she's there and emotionally available and everything else mm -hmm. so uh, there's more taking from the man so when it's time to give to a man it's almost an awkward thing because you know, yeah. don't know how to handle it because yeah. it's not the norm yeah, you yeah. know, because they because they provide, and I think that makes a lot of sense. You know, if yeah. someone is constantly just giving, 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 but I do think that it's time for us to also change the narrative. You know, to also look back and say, you know what, thank you, thank you for the role that you've played, thank you for the effort that you put in. And there are so many times that we do not know the silent tears and the silent struggles that uh, our fathers go through. So I think it's important for us to always take time to actually appreciate them. Th thank you so much, uh, Wagasha. So finally, um. Reverend Karanja, yes, the ship happy Father's Day. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> so I'll ask yeah. you the same question. I want to know, what, what does fatherhood mean to you? And what role, I know that uh, you're a man of the cloth, but what, what role does spirituality play in uh, fatherhood? I know you'll say, let's, let's follow what the scripture says, but at the same time, you're still a man, you're still dad. So do you f sometimes get a little bit of a conflict? <laughs> Thank you very much, Ashiko. Yes. Even before I introduce myself, yes. let me take it up from where Wagasha left it. Okay. When he said that, you know, a man is used to giving, 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 mm. until even receiving becomes a challenge, mm. it's a story. Yeah. About um, two years ago, it was Father's Day, and uh, we had just done the Mother's Day, and uh, my son said, and, you know, the children in the house, we need to surprise our mother, mm. so you will ask me for money you know, to surprise the mother, and we did a good surprise for the mother's day. Yes. So when it was just a month after that, yeah. it was the father's day. Yes. Now, my son comes to me and says, can you give me 10K yeah. so that we prepare a surprise for you? Uh. Now. <laughs> oh, my. So now. So it wasn't really a surprise, was it? <laughs> I mean, how do I finance my own surprise? So that's, <laughs> So even when you're receiving, you still are the giving. You're still giving, <laughs> even when you're receiving. Oh, wow. You're still, you're still giving. giving. So, yeah. yeah. I still want to say, I agree with the... Watch out to you, Kai. Watch out to No, again, yeah. these are children. So of what course. you do, give them the money. Mm. So they go surprise you, but mm -hmm. you definitely know what they are doing. Yeah. Uh, so that, that was very amazing. Mm -hmm. My name is Karanja, like you've just uh, mentioned it. Yes. I am a pastor yeah. with the Presbyterian Church of East Africa, but I always say I am a pastor beyond boundaries, yeah. and I'm a pastor beyond denominational uh, bar, you yeah. know, uh, boundaries. Because yeah. I, I have found myself officiating weddings even for non-Presbyterians, mm -hmm. even weddings in and out of the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. So I pastor whoever needs to be pastored. Yes. So that's one of the things I do. Mm -hmm. I am a trained marriage and family therapist, mm -hmm. you know, uh, locally and internationally because oh, <laughs> i did my schooling most of it in the you know the university the two degrees in the u.s yes and uh, i'm married to sarah mm -hmm. <sighs> not for many years for the last 25 years oh dear so those are not uh, many years <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we yes. have our firstborn is the daughter yes. she just cleared the university she worked with the cooperative bank of kenya mm -hmm. and then we have a son who is 18, he's very excited, joining j to mm. do maths and computer science. Yes. And then we have a 13 year old, uh, who is in junior secondary, he just turned 13. Mm. So we have all our children are five years age difference. Wow. And they're all born in May. 
Wow. Back to the question you have asked about fatherhood. Mm -hmm. In my understanding, fatherhood is a very integral role for every father because to me, fatherhood is that moment when every man should sit back and remind themselves of the godly role they have as the head of a family. Mm -hmm. And that headship is not just for ruling and giving authority, but for giving guidance and being the example as per what God would expect the man to be. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. fatherhood is about the man mirroring Christ in everything he does mm -hmm. in his home and outside of the home. Mm -hmm. So it's not simply like going out to father a baby. No, it is mirroring Christ or godliness in everything that one does mm -hmm. beyond. And it's not just to the children you have given birth to, it is to the entire society in its totality. Mm -hmm. So to me, that is what fatherhood would be. Mm -hmm. Like what Malachi would say, Malachi would say that God would turn the hearts of the fathers to their sons and the hearts of the sons to their fathers. Mm -hmm. So that is to me that what fatherhood really is. Okay, that's yes. really well put, you know, Reverend Karanja. Um, now, earlier on, there's something uh, Waidaka you had actually mentioned. You said you are in the, you're in the business, you're in the money business, huh? you, how to make money, grow money, save money. Yes. And unfortunately, the cost of living has gone up exponentially. And of course, this has brought on a lot of stress to the breadwinners, which in a majority of the households are the men. So what tips do you have for the breadwinners to mitigate this, uh, no, this difficult period? You see, we're in, in our country, and especially here in Africa, you have to be very sensitive. Yes. Because there are those who are literally hand to mouth. Mm -hmm. There are those who are not eating day by day. Mm -hmm. And so in that scenario, I always, in every opportunity that I get, I say as Kenyans, mm -hmm. as Africans, one of our greatest strengths is the way we help one another. Mm -hmm. So if you can help another family, please do. Mm -hmm. Get involved somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because, there, you know, there's that thing of saying, hey, people should work. But sometimes there's no work. There's no work. You know, Absolutely. people should do something on your farm. If you've planted and no, nothing comes up, mm. what do you do at that mm -hmm. point? You did the work, but there's no return. Mm. And so if you can support another family, please do. Now, to those who earn, now mm. let me speak with some authority now on that <laughs> one. Yeah. Here are three things yeah. that I would help. Actually, four things. The first one is, as a father, one of the things that has helped me most is my dear wife, Sheila. Yes. If you work together as a team, two are better than one. What my sweetheart sees and what I see are different, yes. and we complement each other. Uh -huh. And there are times that she has been doing better than me, mm. and we've worked together. There are times I've been doing better than her. Financially, that's what I'm saying. Mm. And we complement and help one another. Mm -hmm. That's what I've seen that works. And in all the relationships that I've seen where mentors of, uh, who have mentored me, that is the relationship. Mm. It is a joint team effort. Mm. Secondly, now here are the three points. Yeah. Number one, principle around money. Pay yourself first. Mm -hmm. Now, I know Reverend is here, so I, I, let me explain what pay yourself first means. <laughs> so he said, the, get, the, is it the third or the 30%? Trouble, <laughs> before I get in trouble, what does that mean? Yes. So there are certain people that you pay whether you like it or not. You pay the government, yes. and if you are a believer like myself, yes. you pay your you tithe and tithe. offering to yeah. the church. Okay, yeah. so that's not even a given. The yeah. next person you pay after that, yeah. if you ask most people, they'll pay their landlord, or mm -hmm. they'll pay the bank, or they'll mm -hmm. pay someone else. Mm -hmm. I'm saying after those first two important ones, pay mm -hmm. yourself. How yes. do you do that? You save and invest first. Make it a priority because what tends to happen is people pay themselves at the end. When you have paid the landlord, you have paid your the, you like paid a little money the school that you fees, have left. the bursa, you've yeah. paid everybody. Mm -hmm. Then if there's anything left and most of the time there's nothing there's really left, nothing. so you ne end up never saving or investing. Mm -hmm. So principle number one, pay yourself first. Principle number two, and that's why you need a good teammate. Yeah. Track your. We will understand. I yes. Know. Oh. You need a good teammate because you don't. You're not the one doing all the spending. Mm -hmm. Most of the time in a household, if you're a father, you have more than one person spending. Track your spending. Mm -hmm. Write down everything you spend at least for one month every year. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it'll reveal some things that you didn't even know. Uh -huh. Most people have no clue where their money goes. Mm. And I, I'm telling you, do this, do this experiment. Yes. Go through your M-Pesa messages or if you use any other 
financial services <laughs> on your own. I, I, I have to confess my sins first before yes. I tell somebody else to do it. Yeah. When we did it the first time, my wife and I, mm -hmm. this was now 11 years ago, we had just gotten married. We found we were spending more on takeout food than our rent. No. Yes. Way. But it's because it's small amounts that yeah, you don't pay attention collectively, to. Collectively. Yeah. If both of you are buying lunch at the office, 200 bob, 200, 250, that's 500 shillings in a day. Mm -hmm. Monday to Friday, that's 2,500. Mm -hmm. Then on the weekend, where do you go, Ashiko? Mm -hmm. You go somewhere and mm -hmm. spend three, five, yeah, you know, five depending on what yeah. you're doing. And Sunday after church, the same thing. Yeah. We found if you add that up, at that time it was over 34,000 shillings yeah. and we were spending 28K on rent. On rent. So we would look at each other and wonder, where is the money to invest? We were eating it. Mm. <laughs> Last one, mm -hmm. focus on assets. Assets. Assets put money in your pocket. Mm. If, you are sp if you are purchasing things, most of the things that we purchase take money out of mm -hmm. our pocket. Mm. They use electricity, they use our time, they use everything. Those who have created wealth purchase items that do the opposite, mm. put money in their pocket. Mm -hmm. If you focus on that, you build wealth. Wow, wow, fantastic. I really hope mm. that everybody has been able to note what we have been talking <laughs> yeah. about, yeah? yeah? And we'll also post them on our social media. So let's move on to Mr. Wagasha. Uh, and of course, you did mention something and I wanted us to come back to that. So of course, um, we know that since time in memorial, the role of a man has been to provide. And like you mentioned, uh, your job does take you away from home. How have you been able to maintain a healthy work-life balance? Mm. Uh, allow me uh, to go back a little. Mm -hmm. I realized that I did not actually talk about me being a father. Yes. When I was introducing myself, yeah. I am actually a father of uh, three kids. Yes. Uh, I don't want to call them all kids because my son is 20. Wow. He's in, uh, in, in He's college. He's still, like still your kid. Uh, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I have a daughter who's 13 and yeah. another one who's three. Yes. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Huge <laughs> gap. So, <laughs> wow. so, so, you know, fathering those, obviously, you know, is, is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, being a father is, I think, to me, the most fulfilling thing that can happen to anyone. Okay. Now, to your question, mm -hmm. uh, I, there's someone who said the other day to me and, uh, that uh, to, your, to the world, you're just you, Waithaka. Mm -hmm. You're just a man. Mm -hmm. You could even be of little consequence. Mm -hmm. But to your kids, you are the world. Mm -hmm. You are everything to your kids. That means that every little thing that you do counts for so much for them. And like you are asking about, you know, us being away for so long. Yeah. Uh, for me, I feel like you want to be intentional about making some time, yes. whenever you can, yeah. to spend some quality time with the kids. Mm -hmm. And like for me, the, my challenge now is, you see how different the age the ages are, is yeah. for the kids. Eh? It means now when I'm spending time with my son, mm -hmm. who's 20, his needs are different from my daughter, who's yes. three, you know? Um, so you have to be deliberate and distributing the time that you have available for you to them mm -hmm. and, you know, making it count. It may not be as much as you might want to mm -hmm. because, you know, duty calls and you have to be out there, but you have to be deliberate all the time. And the kids need you. And you don't have an option. You have to be there. And you have to be. You cannot use the excuse of I'm busy, I'm busy. So no. whatever time that you have, you carve it out yeah. as quality time. Yeah. yeah. And, and the thing I would like to say is that, you know, when I say I have a 20-year-old, it's amazing how fast they grow. Sometimes mm -hmm. you think you have time. You don't. Mm -hmm. You don't. Wow. Yeah. I like that. You think that you have all the time in the world. You no, blink. You don't. Yeah, I think the blink. mothers can also resonate. We always yeah. sit for one second, we were closing. The baby was this small, the next second they are taller than you. Yeah. So I think even for the parents, the fathers and mothers at home is to treasure the moments that you have with your kids because they don't stay um, young forever. Mm -hmm. And soon they'll be out of our houses. Now, um, Reverend Karanja, uh, when we're talking about, you know, distance and quality time, it is, it's unfortunate uh, that um, it has been said that absentee fathers are the leading cause of the moral degradation in society. We're talking about alcoholism, we're talking about dropping out of school, and most of the vices have been attributed to the lack of the father's impact on the child's development. I mean, what's your take on this? Um, thank you very much. That's, I'm part in agreement with that, that absentee father is not a positive thing to any child growing up in a community. Mm -hmm. And uh, to begin with, 
of course, when God created all of us, says, Father, mother shall live, you know, you will live your father, your mother, so that you and your wife are joined together, so mm -hmm. that you're no longer two but one. Yes. So that you can bring up these children. But you also realize that the world we have today, the, the context from which the scriptures were written is different from the context today. Absolutely. Yes. Because then we had more or less, you know, pastoralist families that lived together, you know, agriculturalist families. Today we are in the industrialization. And with industrialization, you find one fa a father will go far away to work, a mother might even be outside the country working. Mm -hmm. So you go to navigate around those aspects. Mm -hmm. But you realize that, and this has been researched and found out, that 72, about 72% 72 of children who grow up with both father and mother together mm -hmm. and grow up with a religion, mm -hmm. with a faith, mm -hmm. they become successful in life. 72% mm -hmm. of them. Like you bring up your children with their religion and you are together with them, about 72% of those children become successful. Mm. And then they say, those children brought up by just a father. You know, the father takes them to church and is present for them and all that. About, they say about 56% of their about, they also become successful. Mm. Where only the mother is available. The chances of those children going to alcoholism and all that, it's very high. Mm. They say the chances of not, them not, not drilling are only 16%, mm. if, especially when they are boys. Mm. That's so true. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I had someone say the other day, and which made a lot of sense, that uh, mothers, uh, their way of uh, raising kids is yes. uh, instinctively to protect them. Mm. Yes. You protect them from everything you possibly could as a mom. Mm. Even from the teacher. And you protect yeah, them even, even from, from the teacher. Even, even from, from their schooling. peers. Yeah, yes. they have, they're playing uh -huh. and the baby comes back crying and you don't even know what happened. And, yeah. oh, what and you're already my guns son? blazing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, but, but so that is how you, uh, mothers bring up kids. But then how, how, and that, that's how they protect. Mm. How fathers protect is actually by letting loose so that they are, you are preparing that child for the future. Mm -hmm. yeah? Because you know the world out there is not really it's not that the is. easiest one yes yeah. yeah, exactly yeah. that's why the bible yeah. says in yeah. Proverbs 6 20 mm. children obey your father's commands mm. and do not neglect your mother's teaching mm. i hope you get that and the audience mm. can understand that that here is their commands mm. obey your father's commands in the mm. same verse but do not neglect your mother's yeah. teaching. Mm. So the person who is able to give commands and rules, mm. it's the father. And that's why our children in the house, the mother will tell them, you know, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, and they'll still do it. Yeah. My wife will tell the children when they were younger, brush your teeth, brush your teeth, and they're still rolling around the house. I will simply say, I thought your mom said you the brush your teeth. The authority figure. You Take know, it. And the, they all the, go to brush. The, <laughs> the authority figure. And I think we can all resonate to that, especially when we're growing up. You know, if uh, mom says something, you know, you say, okay, fine, then you can play around with mom. But the moment, it was dume akiguruma. Dume. You take off, you scamper so <laughs> like, like, like roaches. Yes, and it's not like even you like physically yeah. you spank them. Yeah. No, you don't yeah. discipline them physically as such. Yeah. You simply say, I, I can't remember any of my kids that I ever like you know, slapped or used a sandal or mm. beat them up. Mm -hmm. My wife has been beating those guys left, right, front. <laughs> you know what <laughs> Reverend, you're actually right. I think we need to move on to the qu next question. But it's very true. I mean, most of the time, the disciplinarian, the person who would be doing the beating <laughs> would be mom. But the moment that beats you, you know, and yeah, upon the So I do agree with you in terms of instilling respect and authority, especially respect of, you know, the respect of authority is very crucial in a child's development. So, of course, if the father is being looked at as that is his role and he's not there, yes. then it's no wonder that uh, this uh, absentee fatherhood is being, you know, related yes. to to all of this. Now, and um, you go to yeah. be present. You and know, and being present, yes, there, absolutely. You may not be physically present mm -hmm. because of the aspect of like you're going yeah. outside, you're, maybe you're working outside and all that. But if there's a time you can be present while you are absent is today. Yes. You have telephone, mm -hmm. you have phone calls, you have video calls. Even when you're away, you can even do a video call with mm. your children. Mm. Let them know, how are you guys doing? Have you finished your homework? You know, are you going to bed? Have yeah. you brushed your teeth? Mm. 
you know, mommy will tuck in net for you before yeah. like mosquito yeah. net. So even when you are working, even for a whole week yeah. outside, you can ensure every evening before the children go to bed, mm -hmm. you have a conversation. Yeah. Even like having a family altar, mm -hmm. you still can pray together even when you are away mm -hmm. because you have all these video calls, you can do phone calls. I travel, but that has not made me not do that prayer wow. that we ought to do with the family. Well, before you go to sleep, I think yeah. the contest at this, at this particular, it was not uh, the fathers who are taken away by work, it's the fathers who abscond all together. Absolutely. Like yeah. the, when we are talking about mm. what we call what baby daddies, yeah. a scenario for baby daddies, and I think that was mm. what the question. So I think if I should rephrase the question, what do you... What is your take on baby daddies? Not someone like uh, engineer who is who is busy. Uh, ah. What about the ones who just took off? And you see, so in society right now, there are so many there are so many single mothers. You yeah. know, so while they will always say single mothers are the ones who are raising these uh, children wrong. But what about the fathers who are supposed to be there and they are not there? What's your take on that? Okay. Uh. One, that's not God's design. Yes, yeah, God's briefly. design is that there's father and mother. Mm -hmm. But there are other circumstances that yes. can happen. Mm -hmm. You know, you can even get a baby and the father dies immediately. Mm -hmm. And this fa lady is left single for the rest of her time. Mm -hmm. It can be like now the baby daddies, mm -hmm. where you are like father baby okay. here, father baby there, mm -hmm. and the baby is without a father figure. Yes. I would say, mm -hmm. as a mother, take the responsibility. Mm -hmm and take up that baby and bring them up. Yes. The most ideal thing would be where every father would be present for the children. Mm -hmm. I, am, I like giving my own example. I, my mom was single. Yes. And um, I carry the name Karanja, but I hear my father was a Somali. I did yes. not get to see him. Yeah. I have never seen him. Mm -hmm. I hope he doesn't appear on this TV. <laughs> 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 and, and if he appears, that's okay. That's fine, yeah. that's fine you know. <laughs> that's fine, yeah. <laughs> now, but what happened? I had a grandmother who really cared and loved and who was a disciplinarian yes. and who took us to church. Yeah. So, and who always kind of pointed God to us as the ultimate father. Mm. So, even as I went through high school, through university, mm -hmm. becoming a pastor, there was this grandmother who ensured, and the grandfather was there, but my grandfather had four wives. So you can imagine how many children yeah. and grandchildren. So my yeah. grandfather had little time. His hands were full. His hands were Quite full. Quite yes. <laughs> yes. But you see, here is a grandmother who really took up that responsibility and ensured things worked. Mm. So that's what I would say. One, take responsibility. Mm. Choices have consequences. Mm. By the time you go to bed with that lady, know that the consequences could be getting a child. Yes. Be willing and be ready as a man. Be a man. Man up. If you have gone to bed with that lady to enjoy yourself, be ready to take the responsibility of what comes out of the mm. enjoyment. Yes. So I would say, and speak on this Father's Day to every man listening mm. to me, mm -hmm. be a man enough. Mm. Being a man is not going to say, oh, I have five children with different wives, and you do not even know how they look like, mm -hmm. where they are. Mm -hmm. Take responsibility. Yeah. Choices have consequences. Chances have consequences. Yeah. I love that and I think that's a really good time for us guys to go on break. Uh, the, I wish I wish had, we had all day to sit with this gentleman. You know, the kind of wisdom that they're imparting is a woof, you know. So, <laughs> so let's take a short break and then we'll be back for the question and answer session. You know, don't go far away.
welcome back to the Dada's Show. I hope you've been enjoying what you've been seeing so far on this Father's Day. So I hope you're wishing your father, your uncle, your grandfather a happy Father's Day wherever they may be. Remember to uh, interact with us on all our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1 and at Ashiko, the host. So we are come to the question and answer session where my audience gets to interact with the panel. Of course, you know, ask them questions, share, uh, you know, give them words of encouragement. Uh, but before we jump into that, there's a gentleman in my audience that I all uh, have to acknowledge. Uh, he's a father, he's a father, and he's also a father of many, especially in the informal settlements. I'll give him an, an opportunity to tell us what he does and why he does it. So, Karibu Sana, Mr. John Ndoloko. And thank you for acknowledging me. Uh, my name is John, John Doloka, and I, I will say I'm blessed. I never knew my father. I've grown with a loving, supportive mom without a father. Mm -hmm. Now I had to share the things that I had to learn on my own for others to learn through me. Mm -hmm. And I will first of all appreciate my wife. She supports me in ways I could have on my own. Mm -hmm. Because the group, the group that we have cut peace, it wasn't my idea. It was her idea, and she came with it, and we act actually actualized it. The group got registered, okay. and now we have a team of boys and girls you are mentoring. Mm. So the group has two parts. It has, for young mothers, we have before, before you get to be a mom, and after you get to be a mom. A mom. Mm -hmm. And... The group only focuses on young mothers where mm -hmm. we target 24 and below. Mm -hmm. If you get above 24, there's uh, other groups that we work with and we refer you to. Mm -hmm. And for our group, let me mention that the things that we do mostly is for impacting the boy child. Yeah. They get to have emotional intelligence because mm -hmm. that's a challenge where we come from. And something else is manhood is not appreciated in okay. a society whereby everyone fight for himself mm. and God for us all. Yeah. So we will move on to our first question of uh, our question and uh, uh, answer session uh, from Doris. Thank you. My name is Doris Mudomi. I run a program, a mentorship program called Rebuilders Mentorship Program whereby we mentor teenagers, and there is this question that has been popped severally by teens' boys, asking when they have issues, especially when they have gotten to teenagehood and they have things they want to share, but now their fathers are not really present in that they are not approachable. So they keep asking, how can I develop a good board with my dad in that I can share man-to-man -man talk without really involving my mom whom they are very close. Mm -hmm. So my question is, how would you help fathers to really have that board with their sons so that now the sons can easily share anything that they are going through as they grow to adulthood from teenagehood? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Doris, for the question. Uh, I think it's, that's a, a bit of a complex question, uh, specifically because I do not believe that you can suddenly form a relationship and especially with a child who is in their late teens mm -hmm. unless that relationship was there before like i mentioned earlier i am co-parenting my kids with, with their mothers like i live with my son um but i'm not with the mom and we parted away a long time ago when he was maybe about four or five years old but i made sure from day one that i was always making time to stay in contact with the child, yeah, so that we constantly build that relationship over time. Because you can't show up when the child is 15 or 16 years old mm -hmm. and expect them to respect you as a father figure and be able to open up with you. However, uh, you know, we are where we are. Uh, if a child is already at that age and they desire to have a relationship with the dad, it can be tricky, but I can't say it can't be done. However, it will take a lot more work uh, because um, the, 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 f the father must be willing. Mm -hmm. Because if it's not willing, mm -hmm. there's really not much you can do. But what I could say that the mom could probably do is also seek out other men probably who are male figures in her life, maybe friends or relatives who can mentor this child 
and maybe try and talk to them to be more available to this child. Yeah? And I have done that before also with other kids who are not necessarily my kids. And I know you can create a bond with a child who is not necessarily your biological child and still be able to help them. Yeah? But I would like to say to the fathers that being a father is an ordained role from God and you cannot leave. Yeah? You must make sure that if you have a child out there, you don't have to be with a parent, with a mom, to be in their life. You have to make sure that you're in their lives. Because being an, be, uh, uh, growing up without a, a father has a certain negative effect on the child, like the pastor said. Mm -hmm. And it cannot be undone later in life. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure that you are constantly uh, mm -hmm. making the effort to be there. And I can tell you, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. yeah? It's not easy, especially when you're not together, because you, know, you just disagree on a lot of things. But you have to make the sacrifice, because you, know, you made the decision to be a father. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I really feel like that one has been, um, you know, hit the nail on the head. I like, I like what he said, there's really nothing much to add on that. Pastor, is there something you'd want to jump in as having a teenager as well? Uh, thank you very much for the question that has come forth. I want to agree with uh, Mr. John Wagasha what he said, that you cannot come into the type, life of a child when already they are beyond 13. Why? Because there are few developmental stages in the life of a child. From zero to seven, the child, you know, develops trust with the persons around them. They trust you. From about eight to 12, 13, the child starts to doubt you. So it is the trust in stage one that carries you through stage two. From 13 to about 19, the child looks at a parent as being hopelessly outdated. Mm -hmm. It is only... The <laughs> it is a stage... It is a trust the child build in stage one mm -hmm. that will carry you through the final stage. Mm -hmm. So if you come into the life of a, a, a child, especially the ages of 13 to 19, and they never knew you, I can assure you there's going to be trouble because they are looking at you as being outdated. They think you do not know stuff. They think you are too old. And they wonder what you're saying. My children think I am the oldest fella ever created on earth. You know, they think I'm <laughs> too old to even understand some things. They will even tell me, Daddy Ushiki, Daddy Ulevi, you know, <laughs> because they think I'm old. So if you come to the life then, you'll be in, in, in trouble. Mm -hmm. That's why the Bible says, bring up a child in the right way and they will not divert from it. So you cannot come and the child already has been brought up in the wrong way and you want to bring in the right way at 20. <laughs> it, it, it will not blend. Yeah, that's simply you can say, all you can do if it's late, because again, thank God that's it's never too late. Yeah. When you're coming to the life of a child at the 18 or 20, come in slowly. Yes. Don't come, boom, I'm your daddy. They will ask you, where were you before? I'm your mother, where were you before? Come slowly. Go through the people the child trusts. Is it the mother? Is it an uncle? Is it a friend? Try to go through that. Is it the church? Go through the, cha the, the channel the child trusts. Mm -hmm. Then after you have, like now, the child have started trusting you, you now slowly bring in your values, your expectations into the life of the child, but I like that. By the way, need we say more? By the way, Kuampole, and I hope that is something that's going to be able to, you'll be able to take back home, yeah. you know, about Kuampole, you know, take it, let's, let's say, okay, the damage is done, but yeah, Kuampole, take everything uh, in stride. So thank you so much, Doris, for your question. Uh, I believe our next question is from Sue. Thank you very much, uh, Ashiko. My name is Sue Musando. I'm the founder of uh, Parenting Teenagers Hub which is a support group for parents. It's on Facebook. And uh, as I interact with parents uh, daily, there's something that comes out that um, you know, family dynamics have changed. Where you, had, you have a father and a mother who are always there, or a father and mothers who are present. Nowadays you find that maybe a child is growing up with the mother and the father is out there somewhere. And I keep wondering, what is the role of the father or a man in that family? Well, you're not there, but everyone knows who you are and where you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I don't know, because my, my experience has been one of present fathers. Yeah. Um, 
my, my dad, I want to say uh, happy Father's Day, dad, um, oh. was there for us as kids. Um, and he, he stood, I mean, he stood up in, in, in ways that many people didn't know. Like, um, my sister is my half sister, my, uh, and she's the firstborn. And he took her in as a two year old because there were problems now with the mom. So he raised her uh, and has been with us that whole time. He, he gave for everything. I think in any relationship, what we're discussing here, there needs to be a negotiation nowadays. Because there's, there are, as we've said before, there are societal expectations. But does anyone really know what does it, those expectations are? Not they are no longer defined. What does it mean? So you'd, you'd think in the old ways it was you have to provide. What does provide mean? You bring the money and then you take care of the home. But now when both of you are working, maybe one is earning more than the other. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. So we've discovered as we're as we training, it needs to be negotiated. What does that mean? If I come into the room and I say, where I come from, we do it like this. You will tell me, where I come from, we do it like this, so they are completely different. Mm -hmm. So what we need to discuss is, where are we going? Mm -hmm. So in any relationship, you sit down and decide. Fine, you've come from there, you've come from there, but our direction and our goal is this, to raise children to this aim, to this standard. And if you come to that agreement, then you'll decide how much time are you going to spend with one another, how much time are you going to spend on um, your faith, on learning, on growth? It is a negotiated future that you're working on. So please stop assuming that the man knows what you are thinking. <laughs> Ladies and uh, gentlemen, stop assuming that your, the, the lady knows what you're thinking. And parents, stop assuming that your child knows what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. You have to work together for the future that you want. Mm. Can I please just add for the gentleman, yes, very please. quickly. Yes. If you're trying to, uh, in my personal experience, men function well with action. Don't put men and boys in the same room and tell them now talk. In two minutes we have finished what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> put men and boys in the room uh, or in a space in which there is action. One of the things that I love doing with my dad is not talking with him but it would be to go to the garage and see the, how the car is made. I learned how to talk to a mechanic because of that experience. So get them in a room or get them in a situation where there's something functional happening mm -hmm. because then men, the boys will relate and be able to work from there. Mm. Wow, mm. I, think, I think that's really, I think that deserves a round of applause because I think we've actually been able to decipher something mm -hmm. because instead of for forcing them, women, we can be able to do it. As we can sit and beat stories until the cows come back home. <laughs> but for men, I think it's the strike on what is brings them together. Mm -hmm. That is a universal language. Mm -hmm. Thank you so, so much. So we will move on to our next question and our next question is uh, from Faith. Thank you so much, Ashiko. Uh, my name is Faith Ken, and uh, the founder of uh, Faith Foundation Kenya. So before asking my question, I've had uh, so many people here, we do the same thing, those who are in the community sensitization, advocacy, and uh, CSR. I think the rise of a uh, single motherhood that can come in this conversation is because we are leaning much on the girl child. We can't be empowering women and failing to teach them to live with an empowered boy. You know, our parents stayed so long in marriage and still staying in those marriages. For us, born 2002 or one, even getting a, a boyfriend is a problem because I'm too empowered to be with a man who is not empowered. You see, so when we're bringing in conversations of even raising our kids, a woman is already in another civilization century, but for a man, is still in our cultural norms and my father brought me this way, a man should not do this, you know. So now my question goes to um, the panelist. Um, in a case of uh, a single mother now remarrying or getting married for the first time, you are coming in with a kid and uh, there is another, another person and uh, how do you blend? And do you have conversations with your kids first before does their opinion matter really? Mm. And if it matters, as a man, how do you bring her in from your family members to the society accepting this is now a kid and I have to raise that kid as my own? Okay, thank you so much, Faith. 
That's a very good question, by the way, and I, especially since we're living in a blended society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, 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 are, this is how life is now. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we take it or leave it, <laughs> you know. Yeah. So please, Wangasha, let's, let's start with you because you are your, your lived experience. Yeah, uh, okay, what, what I would say about that is, uh, number one, uh, as parents need to stop the assumption that kids are clueless and they have to go with the decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. Because then you will make a decision and then you carry along your kids and then it's challenges from day one. Uh, the one thing that I tell people who are in, who are single parents, uh, not necessarily single parent by virtue of the other one is probably deceased. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say I'm a single parent, but also my mom, my, my, my kid's mom is alive yes. somewhere. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, because the, 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 the dynamics will always be there because of the mother exists and the child has a relationship with the mother. Mm -hmm. So the number one thing that you always have to do when you want to get back to the dating scene is to tell the person that you're meeting that you have kids. And I think the, one of the biggest mistakes that people make is to assume that it works for you if you hide the fact that mm -hmm. you have kids out of mm -hmm. wedlock. Yeah? Then you think, you know, this is a small thing that I'll deal with later. You ha the people that you're, you're, you're encountering and you're meeting have to know from day one that you have kids. So that from day one you also know, are this, are this person willing to deal with a, a, a single mom? Yeah? Now once you go past that stage now, it's now you can have, start having now the discussion of now, say, co-parenting and integrating now that part is into the family. Yes. Because remember, I mean, I have, a, I have a son, the mom is alive, my son has a very strong relationship with the mother. That means also the mother is somehow in my life. So if my wife can't deal with the fact that I have a child who has a mother who is somehow in my life because of the fact that we have a child together, then it means that relationship can't go anywhere. Mm -hmm. So what it's saying now then is that we have to change the way we think about relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it can no longer be business as usual, the way our parents related because these challenges didn't exist then. Mm. Yeah? But the reality of today is that you know, young mothers are having kids and either the relationship doesn't go, get, go into a marriage or you break up and you're still young and you have an opportunity to remarry. So transitioning now from now being a single parent into a new relationship requires all that openness. Mm. And also that means also taking your kids along. Yeah. If you have dates that you're going to, once you get to past the stage of admitting that you have kids, and then now you're thinking that this relationship is going to go somewhere, then at some point find a way to introduce this child to this man or this woman and see if they also get along. Because if they don't get along, it also means you your relationship will fail. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. Wow, thank you so much. Uh, Reverend, would you like to add something? Briefly, just add and say, it's true. Today we have a lot of empowered girls. We also have a lot of empowered boys. But the challenge is we have grown up traditionally knowing, especially the what I call the three Ps, mm -hmm. that the man is a provider, he is a priest, he is a protector. Now that is highly challenged. Provision, like Waidaka said, you come in and you have a woman who is providing even maybe better than you. Mm. Then you are a protector. But a man was a protector, you know, most of the boys who got circumcised during our days would be given a shield and a spear that you are the protector of the family. Today, a woman doesn't need to protect her. There is CCTV, there is barbed wire, there is security guards around. <laughs> are dogs. So my protector, they are dogs, <laughs> German shepherds. So she... <laughs> okay. so, then of course the other one was the priest. Yeah. That you are the priest of the family. Now you'll find a man who hardly goes to church or even to the mosque or even going to the temple and sits in the house. The woman is the one who is like a leader in the church. So she's kind of leading as a priest in the house. And this man really gets disoriented in a big way. So we also need to teach and speak like she has said, speak to our boys as they are growing up so that they do not just look at themselves as their importance is just what they bring on the table. There is what has been said, I think, is what you got, what you got, what said. there is the issue of the negotiation. We negotiate, we agree. This is what I can bring on the table, this is what you, you can bring on the table. Mm -hmm. And also help the women to understand, no matter how empowered you are, the child you are bringing into life, because there are enough women today who are also saying, 
I do not want a man in my life. I only want a child. You are denying a child what you got yourself. You have a father, probably. Or you had a daddy who brought you up. Mm. Why are you denying the child you are having the opportunity? It could be your chance to have a child without a father. But is it the child's decision to stay without a father? A father. So we should also teach our women and our girls to stop being selfish. Because you're also having a very selfish generation. It's about me, myself. I can't put up with him. What will happen to the child? Mm -hmm. What is the need of the child? Mm -hmm. We've come to the end of today's interactive, informative, and very um, exciting episode where we get to celebrate the fathers who are with us here and the ones who are at home. So here's my two cents in all of this. Uh, a good father is one of the most unsung and unpraised and unnoticed and yet one of the most valuable assets in society. So today, look around you and uh, celebrate your grandfather, your father, and even the men who have walked in tho those shoes. Take some time to acknowledge the impact they've had in, in your life and knowing very well that without them you couldn't be the person that you are today. So uh, as always, let us know what you think of this and any other episode that we've had on all our social media platforms at KBC Channel One and at Ashiko the host. So on behalf of my production team at KBC, our location partners, Best Western Hotel, Upper Hill, and myself, Ashiko Mbune, I thank you all for joining us today and happy Father's Day to all of you back at home. We'll catch you same place, same time next week. Bye-bye. My name is Doris Nkatha Gitonga. I want to wish my dad, Stanley Gitonga, a very happy Father's Day. Thank you for bringing us together as a family. We are, I'm very proud to be your daughter and you're a true role model to all of us. And to my husband, Michael Kamotho, I want to wish you a very happy Father's Day. Thank you for being a dad to the kids. Happy Father's Day. My name is Liz Marie Winda, and I would like to wish my father, Dr. Okema, a happy Father's Day. I love you so much, and thank you for everything that you did for me and do for me. Thank you. Hi, my name is Miriam Masava, and I would like to wish my dad, Henry Odanga, happy Father's Day. And I really love that you are always, always present in our life, always supporting us, always providing for us, and being that priest in our family. I love you so, so very much. Uh, my name is Maureen Tyler. I would like to take this opportunity to wish my dad, um, David Omurambi, a happy Father's Day. Thank you, Daddy, for being my daddy. From the time I was a little girl, you've been there for me. I want to just say thank you. And to my husband, Jacob Mondio Loach, thank you for being a best, the best father uh, to my children. I'm Diana Mugo. I would like to wish uh, my dad in heaven, uh, Joseph Mugo Getuko, happy Father's Day, and may you continue resting in peace. And I would also like to wish my, the love of my life, uh, Stanley Thuo, uh, thanks for being there for us and for being there for our two lovely, handsome boys. We love you. <laughs>